1.3 million people in the UK are living with long COVID and hundreds of thousands of them experience breathlessness, despite traditional lung scans appearing to be normal. Well, now some researchers are using a different technique in a clinical trial to try to find better treatment options. What is it then? Let's uh, find out more from uh, Professor Fergus Gleeson, a consultant radiologist working on the test, and also to Dan Scoble, a former personal trainer who's now living with breathlessness after contracting long COVID. And it's really good to have both of you with us. Thanks so much. Uh, Dan, if I can start with you, first of all, just tell us what happened to you. Uh, yeah, basically at the start of um 2020 I just fell down with symptoms which were well just pretty scary really with all COVID coming out um and I I had the exact same symptoms and more um and I had severe chest pain heart palpitations everything like my body was just in complete it seemed in complete shock and well I just never I never really never really got better and two years later I'm still somewhat suffering now when you say still somewhat suffering just talk us through what sort of symptoms you've got uh yeah so I I, I mean I still can't I'm somewhat physically disabled so I can't go out on walks um I can't exercise um and I still can't um I still can't work yet so it's been over two years um of just basically surviving um and looking after myself looking after my nutrition sleep um and mindset um just trying to keep myself somewhat sane and healthy yeah, which I can imagine hasn't been easy and, and it is worth reiterating that you were a personal trainer so you were a guy who was in good shape um mm -hmm. I take it yeah, yeah, I didn't. I mean, I didn't have any. I didn't have any underlying health conditions, and didn't really see COVID as a as a worry for me. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay, Doctor uh, Professor, I beg your pardon, Professor Gleeson, tell us a little bit more uh, about this um, about this study and what you found. First of all, uh, thanks, Rebecca and Dan. I hope you eventually and soon get better. Um, our, our study is looking at patients that are a control group. Uh, post-hospitalized COVID patients and patients such as Dan who had COVID, who um, didn't require to go into hospital and uh, attending post-COVID clinics with long COVID, but specifically targeting those that have breathlessness. As Dan and probably your audience know well, there's many, many symptoms related to long COVID from muscle ache and fatigue to um, something called brain fog and uh, breathlessness. And what we're doing is we're performing a scan called a hyperpolar xenon MRI. Sorry, it sounds so like science fiction, but mm -hmm. effectively, it's just you breathe in a bag of xenon. It's harmless. You just breathe in a litre whilst you're lying on the MRI scanner. And xenon behaves very similar to oxygen, and we can watch you breathe it in, and it goes from your lungs, across your lungs, into your bloodstream, and we can watch that happen. And we've just done a pilot study that shows that some of the patients, not all of the patients, but some of the patients, that passage from the lungs into the bloodstream is abnormal, is impaired. And so our study is going to look to see if that's specific to patients with breathlessness and long COVID, whether it occurs in patients that have brain fog and long COVID, uh, or in patients that actually had COVID and have got better. Because what we're trying to do, as everybody investigating in this field is, is trying to find out what's going on for these poor patients. Absolutely. It's worth just elaborating that xenon is basically an odourless, tasteless gas, isn't Sorry. it? Yeah, yeah. It, it's, ju it's just, yeah, it's just a gas. It's just, you, you breathe, it's perfectly harmless in the doses we use. You don't know you breathe. Actually, it makes you sound like Barry White for about five seconds after you breathed it in, just so to let you know. So it's got its advantages. Um, hey, hey, well, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, Professor, Professor Gleeson, could people have had these problems before they got COVID or have you been able to say definitively that they've been caused by COVID? Okay, so the answer to the first question is you've heard from Dan, who as a personal trainer, I would imagine, would put most of the rest of us into shade, into the shade about how fit and healthy they are. We know their CT scans are normal even now. Mm. We know that their lung function is normal even now. So, and most of them are non-smokers without what's called a pre-morbid condition, i.e. abnormality before they get sick. So no, we think that they had healthy lungs before. Um, and uh, to be honest, I can't remember the second question. Oh, no, you don't worry. Me. I was just saying, well, 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 that you can therefore definitively say that the problems that they're experiencing are caused by COVID. Presumably, yes, from what you're saying. 
Okay, we can say that we can say the abnormalities on the scan are almost certainly due to COVID. What we need to do is see how much of of the abnormality is causing their symptoms, because you can have things wrong with your lungs or your kidneys or your heart and not cause symptoms. So we need to make that association. So that's one of the next bits of the largest study. And importantly, we also need to see exactly where in the lungs the problem is. Dan, I am coming back to you, but Professor Gleason, just a final thought from you. You're talking about this larger study. How long will that take before we have perhaps some more definitive answers? Yeah, and that's a great question. So the whole study is funded by the NIHR and it'll take 18 months. We're going to report to them every 50 patients. But one of the reasons we're uh, presenting our study now, which is submitted for peer review, but hasn't been reviewed and and agreed by scientists that it's correct, just to put that in, in context. Um, we, we, we're doing this to show that actually we're researching into long COVID so that patients with long COVID and the public know what's going on and the other scientists around the world are aware of it. But it'll take 18 months to two years before we have a final answer, but we're trying to get there as fast as we possibly can. OK, well, Dan, some good news, although I suspect you would have liked a six months rather than 18 month answer there. But <laughs> yeah, sure, what are your reflections smart. on what you've heard? Yeah, so I mean, it's great. It's really interesting. I find it fascinating. I'm always curious and I still believe there is definitely some form of treatment um, for long COVID. I mean, there's, I'm, I spoke to a lot of people today. I, I try not to identify with long COVID anymore as myself because I just need to focus. Uh, I, I feel like staying away from the media really helps me in terms of recovery. Um, but I spoke to a lot of people today with long COVID and it's um, made me somewhat angry that, you know, I'm two years down the line, they're two years down the line, they're still suffering so much. I'm still suffering a fair amount. And we, you know, there hasn't really been many answers and I completely understand that it's, it's a new illness um but even just from consultants diagnosing you with things which aren't exactly accurate um say mental health conditions and it can somewhat just demoral just make people feel so much worse so much more lonely so much shameful and less hopeful so yeah i just i i really hope something come well i hope it yeah i hope it gives hope to everyone watching with long covid hmm. um and to know that it is it is real it's not you know it's not all in our heads well i did want to just finally talk to you both about that because there has been over time some skepticism about whether it is exactly you put it better than i could it, it just in the in the mind i wondered first of all dan what sort of reaction you had from health professionals when you have discussed um what's what you've been feeling H have they been responsive or have you met any skepticism so it, it just makes me sad because it's well it's slightly because I, I just you know there was no compassion from clinicians I worked with whenever I went to seek help um, you know when I say compassion I just mean them telling me the truth of I don't know I'm sorry um, maybe pass you on to like a functional medicine practitioner to um, holistically help you whereas I just got told they like have you had anxiety before and they try and put you on SSRIs and I'm just like look this is real like I'm not I'm you know I'm not I'm not over exaggerating these things that they're, they're, they're real for me and it, I, know, I know it happened the same with like a lot of other people I know it just gets identified with like how's your mental health do you have anxiety this and it's it's it really is it, it was horrible and then my lung collapsed um a year from having covid I had a pneumothorax and I went in and again it was the same same response it's like oh it's spontaneous this just happens to tall people and then I've got other consultants telling me oh it's definitely long covid and then I don't get provided with any help so it's just I mean of course, my mental health is going to be affected from this and an inflammatory disease is going to inflame my brain and I'm going to suffer from lower mood um, and neurological symptoms anyway. Um, but yeah, it's, it's uh, yeah, I've been quite saddened from, I guess, how Western, you know, Western medicine have gone about this approach towards long COVID. Um, yeah, it's somewhat quite lonely. Professor Gleeson, um, I, I haven't got very much time left. In fact, I'm being told to say goodbye, but I just want to very briefly ask you for a response to that because there are these misconceptions around long COVID, aren't there? I, I think there are. I think my job as a clinical scientist is to take the new tests and try and find out what's going wrong, what's happening with some of the patients such as Dan. And um, that's what we're, we're working hard for you, Dan and for other patients with long COVID and the scientific community will get there for you. Professor Fergus Gleeson and Dan Scoble, really good to talk to you both and really enlightening. Thank you both so much for talking to us on BBC News. Thank you. Thanks, Rebecca. Thanks. <laughs> he was in a rush. Uh, let's